You're going through a tough time. It might be trouble at work, a disagreement with a friend, or an unexpected disappointment. Often, it's natural to see these situations as purely negative. But what if there's more to them than meets the eye? What if they are part of a bigger plan meant for your good? Consider David, the shepherd boy who became a king. His story is well known. He was just a kid tending to sheep when he faced Goliath, a giant warrior who seemed unbeatable. This confrontation was daunting, but it was also David's stepping stone to greatness. If David had never encountered Goliath, he might have remained just a shepherd. The battle was not just a challenge. It was an opportunity. It was, in a way, a blessing disguised as a conflict. This idea isn't just about ancient stories. It applies to you too. You might face situations that seem entirely unpleasant. People who oppose you, circumstances that test your patience, and challenges that push you to your limits. These aren't just obstacles. They could be exactly what you need to reach your potential. They are what I like to call divine setups. Take a moment to reflect on Psalm 23, 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. This verse suggests that even in the midst of adversity, there is provision and abundance. God doesn't just provide in peaceful times. He sets a feast right in front of our challenges and adversaries. Why then do we often feel so overwhelmed by our enemies or obstacles? Perhaps it's because we don't realize that they can be the catalyst for our growth. It's not easy to embrace this perspective, but it's powerful. When you start seeing your enemies as part of your path to fulfillment, your approach to life changes. You become more resilient and more open to finding lessons in unlikely places. And it's not just about fighting battles. Sometimes it's about enduring them to show who we really are. Just like David, your own challenges might be what introduce you to the world as someone strong, capable, and destined for more than you ever imagined. Moreover, consider the story of Joseph, whose brothers sold him into slavery out of jealousy. This betrayal was brutal, but it led Joseph to a position of power in Egypt where he could save many lives during a famine. His hardship was also a divine setup. Without his suffering, he wouldn't have risen to greatness. So when you wonder, why is this happening to me? Remember that it might be happening for you. The opposition you face could be setting the stage for your promotion, preparing you to step into a new level of recognition and impact. God sometimes places enemies in our lives to keep us engaged and motivated. Just as a teacher assigns difficult problems to solve, God gives us personal Goliaths to overcome, not to defeat us, but to strengthen us. In this light, every critic, every doubter, every challenge is an opportunity to demonstrate faith and perseverance. When you overcome, not only do you grow, but you also get to showcase the extent of your development. Everyone around will witness the favor and the strength that carries you through. So next time you're faced with an enemy, whether it's a person, a situation, or an internal struggle, consider it a part of your journey to greatness. Embrace the challenge, learn from it, and let it propel you to places you've never imagined. After all, your path is lined with both supporters and adversaries, and sometimes it's the adversaries who push you the hardest toward your destiny. Listen. Think about the times you felt cornered by challenges or by people who didn't seem to wish you well. It's easy to get discouraged, to wonder why these things are happening to you. But remember the stories from the Bible and the lessons they carry. Like the Israelites under Pharaoh's rule, your toughest times might actually be setting the stage for your greatest growth. Now let's take a look at Proverbs 16, 7 to 9. These verses tell us something profound. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better is a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. This isn't just poetry, it's a promise. 
Even if you feel like your path is filled with roadblocks put there by others, remember, God is the one steering your journey. You might wonder, how can troubles and enemies be good for me? It's a fair question. When you're faced with someone who betrays you or lies about you, it's natural to feel hurt and angry. Yet, those very situations can be what lead you to discover strengths you never knew you had. They can push you to make choices that align more closely with your deepest values and ultimately with your destiny. Think about the pressure you feel when you're under stress. It's uncomfortable, even painful at times. But just like a diamond forming under the weight of the earth, your character is shaped and polished by these pressures. You emerge stronger, more resilient, and more brilliant than before. So, next time you find yourself in a bind or when someone throws a wrench in your plans, take a deep breath and think about that water hose analogy. If you put your thumb over the end, the water sprays out even harder once you let go. Similarly, the pressures that seem to restrict you can actually propel you forward with more force and speed than you had before. When Pharaoh increased the hardship on the Israelites, he thought he was crushing their spirit. But what actually happened? The Bible tells us, the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. Exodus 1 verse 12. Pharaoh's attempt to suppress them was the catalyst for their explosive growth. This is the paradox of pressure. It can break you or it can break records. Which outcome you experience depends a lot on how you view and handle the challenges. See each difficulty as a tool that God is using to write a greater story with your life. Remember, God never promised a life free of troubles. What he did promise, though, was his presence through those troubles. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Isaiah 43, 2. This verse isn't just comforting, it's empowering. It reminds you that no obstacle is too great when you have divine support. So embrace the heat of the fire like gold in the forge. Let it refine you rather than define you, your enemies, your challenges. They're not the end of your story. They're essential parts of the plot pushing you towards a climax of success and fulfillment that you might never have reached without them. And in the grand scheme of things, when you look back over the difficult chapters of your life, you might just find that they were the most pivotal, the most growth-inducing parts of your journey. They didn't just test you. They testified to the strength and the promise within you, waiting to be revealed in full. Keep walking your path with faith, for it is intricately designed for your ultimate good. Remember how the religious leaders doubted Jesus? They murmured because they couldn't see him for who he truly was. But their skepticism brought out a greater miracle. This is similar to what you might be facing right now. So here's the thing. When people talk behind your back or try to put you down, it's not the end of the world. In fact, it could very well be the beginning of something new and wonderful for you. Think about the paralyzed man whose friends carried him to Jesus. They went to extreme lengths because they believed in a better life for their friend. And Jesus noticed their faith, not just the faith of the paralyzed man, but the collective effort. This story from Luke isn't just about healing, it's a powerful lesson on support, faith, and overcoming barriers, literally breaking through roofs. It's a reminder that when there seems to be no way, faith finds a way. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. And then to address the skeptics, stand up, take your mat and go home. His healing was complete immediate and undeniable. Imagine the faces of those who doubted Jesus when they saw this miracle. Listen to this. The challenges you face, the people who doubt you, they might just be the backdrop for your next big breakthrough. When someone doubts you, it's not just a challenge. It's an opportunity for God to show up and show off in your life. 
Just like Jesus used the murmuring of the skeptics to demonstrate his power, God can use the negativity around you to showcase his work in you. Proverbs 16 verse 7 says, When the Lord takes pleasure in someone's way, he makes even their enemies to be at peace with them. What a promise. Even those who oppose you can become instruments of peace in your life when you walk in ways that please God. This doesn't mean you won't face opposition, but it does mean that the opposition doesn't have the final say. Now, about not fighting battles that don't matter, this is crucial. Like the paralyzed man, you don't need to argue every point or defend yourself against every accusation. Stay peaceful. Stay focused. If God is for you, who can be against you? God's got your back and he's paving your way. So, when the noise gets too loud, when the critics get too harsh, remember you're in good hands. It's like when the Israelites were being oppressed by Pharaoh. The harder their lives were made, the more they multiplied and grew. They thrived in conditions that were meant to break them. Similarly, your difficult conditions are not stopping you. They are propelling you forward. God uses these pressures to increase you, to build resilience and strength within you. And don't forget, when you feel restricted or pressed from all sides, that's not the signal to give up. That's the moment to push forward, to expand beyond what you thought was possible. Pressure can lead to expansion. Just as reducing the flow of water with your thumb creates a stronger spray, the pressures in your life can lead to greater victories. Let's wrap this up with a beautiful picture of transformation. The refurbishment analogy. Think of yourself as a piece of vintage furniture that's seen better days. God doesn't throw us out. He refinishes us. He takes what was old and worn and makes it new again. This isn't just about physical healing, it's about spiritual renewal. Ephesians 4 verses 22 to 24 advises us to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This is your call to transformation. Shed the old embrace the new and as you live this new life remember you will stand out you might even face more opposition because of it but that's okay as jesus said in john 17 his followers are not of this world just as he is not of it you're set apart destined not for ordinary paths but for extraordinary journeys whenever you face opposition criticism or any kind of pressure remember these are not merely obstacles. They're opportunities. Opportunities for God to bring something new out of you, just as he brings new life to what was once old and discarded. Stand firm, keep the faith, and watch as he works all things together for your good. Living as a Christian means you're set apart. You're in this world, but not of it, just like Jesus prayed in John 17, 14 to 16. He didn't ask for you to be taken out of this challenging environment, but prayed for your protection against the evil one. This shows that while the setting might be tough, your mission here is crucial to live out and spread God's word. Now embracing this new identity in Christ means you'll often find yourself at a crossroads. James 4 verse 4 warns us about trying to fit in with the world, which can actually put us at odds with God. It's pretty clear. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. This verse isn't just a warning, it's a call to stay committed, to not fall back into old ways. This challenge can feel a lot like standing at a fork in the road. On one side, there's the path you used to walk, the familiar one where blending in with everyone else feels easy and comfortable. On the other, there's the path of righteousness, maybe less traveled and more daunting, but it's the one that leads to true fulfillment in Christ. It's about making choices that might not always be popular, but are right. You might find yourself in situations where these choices are tested, 
Perhaps you're with friends who are planning something you know goes against what God would want. In that moment, the decision to stand by your faith can feel incredibly hard. You don't want to lose your friends, but you also can't turn away from God. That moment of choice is a profound test of your faith. But remember, you're not alone in this. Pray to God when you find it hard to let go of your old self. He promises to help you. Colossians 3 verses 1 to 4 tells us to set your hearts on things above, not on earthly things. This is because your true life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. It's a magnificent promise. Your current struggles and feelings of not fitting in are temporary. A glorious future awaits you. This future is not just about after you die. It starts now in how you live and bear witness to the hope within you. You're called to be a beacon of light in a sometimes dark world, showcasing what it means to live a life transformed by Christ. So, next time you face opposition or feel out of place in this world, remember this. It's all part of being set apart for something greater. Each challenge is an opportunity to demonstrate the strength of your faith and the hope that we have in Christ. Finally, as the book of Revelation 21 verses 3 to 5 paints a picture of a new creation where God dwells among his people, wiping every tear and eradicating death and pain, hold on to this vision. It's a reminder of the ultimate renewal and restoration that awaits. For the old order of things has passed away. This isn't just a future hope. It's a present reality in the making. As you navigate this world, let this promise guide you and give you peace. By living this way, you're not just passing through life. You're pioneering a path of divine destiny, setting an example for others and preparing for the day when you will stand with Christ in glory. This journey might be tough, but it's also filled with immense joy and the promise of God's everlasting peace.